Dark Kitties, I'm Kerry, the Vacuum Tube Witch, and when I was doing some work um, with uh, the radio I'm restoring now, I had a problem with a portable oscilloscope, the S1-112 uh, from the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Turns out that this scope probably has a damaged uh, power cord because the neon lamp uh, was uh, flickering every now and then and um, the image uh, on the screen was unstable. Let's get to the bench and repair this scope. All this while I'll show you what it has inside. So here we have this uh, wonder of Soviet technology. It's a very simple scope. What's very uh, remarkable about it is that it also uh, features a uh, voltmeter and an uh, ohmmeter. It cannot measure current, but it can measure resistance and voltages. Voltage is up to 1 kilovolt and, uh, and resistance uh, in the range of uh, megaohms, pretty decent uh, for a uh, mobile scope that uh, you may want to take for field jobs. Of course, uh, now uh, now you've got uh, a lot better equipment for that, like the like the fluke, like the Agilent, uh, all kinds of real deal pro gear. But uh, this one is pretty cheap and uh, it's pretty useful in my lab, uh, as a matter of fact. Looks like the power cord uh, is damaged and uh, I will take this device apart and uh, try uh, replacing the power cord. Starting the job by unscrewing the, the first screws that uh, hold the uh, halves uh, of the enclosure together. I should be able to lift the upper part of the enclosure, revealing the inside of the scope, which is pretty complex. Uh, here, of course, is the scope CRT. This is the main transformer. The time base uh, selection switch and um, horizontal um, position um, potentiometer. See the mechanical coupling on the potentiometer's uh, axle. Pretty nice. Some uh, calibration parts. Um, let's get a better view on, on what I'm doing here. Some other potentiometers here probably related to astigmatism, um, 
geometry con corrections and uh, and that kind of stuff. This is the multimeter assembly. Quite a complex one, and uh, I won't be taking uh, such a deep dive uh, and uh, disassembling the scope uh, completely. It's it's pretty complex, and what I uh, want to do with it is uh, replacing the power cord. In order to do that, uh, I want to remove the plate. 220 volt, uh, 50 hertz, and um, the fuse is uh, half an ampere. And then the rated power is uh, 25 uh, volt amperes. If you take a closer look uh, at the fuse holders, you will notice that um, the power cord goes um, to the tip of uh, both of them. So uh, there are two fuses uh, wired in line with uh, with every with each uh, conductor on the power cord. And uh, as I uh, strain relief, you can see that um, the cord is uh, wrapped uh, right here. So in order to get it out, uh, I will have to pull it uh, from this side. Gotta clean my hook tool. Come on. Come on, pretty. Come on. And of course, uh, I will have to wrap it around the uh, same way uh, when installing the new power cable. By the way, take a look here. It, it was made in 1991 when I was five years old. This unit is now uh, 36 years old. Oh, not 36, uh, it's 31 years old. <laughs> soldered connections here. Pretty easy. Wait until my heat my iron up. I will replace it with uh, with a uh, black cable so that it matches the enclosure's color better than the original. Just my sense of aesthetics. That's pretty easy.
turns out very nicely. Gotta trash it. The new one I will make the ends uh, right now while it's still pretty easy to do. And I will have to wrap it uh, through the holes. Using tweezers is pretty practical for this. I might be able to remove this part. Oh, that's gonna make things quite a little bit easier than, than trying to do it when it was in its position come on see that's uh, that's a lot better there is a channel there's this uh, l-shaped channel here where the cable needs to go and we'll be Picking it up uh, from the other side. And then one U-turn and and it will be there. See. It's time to reuse the plastic tubes. Then uh, clean those uh, soldered contacts.
It's Coco meowing. What do you want, Coco? Wrap it around like I always do. And soldering time. assembly time Making sure it clicks into place. Oh, hell yeah! That's how you do it. This teeny tiny plate goes back into its place. And so does the screw. Time to reinstall the top cover. Zooming out. Also making sure that uh, the top cover goes into, into position. And making sure that the assembly here is not uh, cooked. I will have to 
correct the position on on this board. Because I had a little problem with with the multimeter sockets not aligning, but that is fine now. And time to put it back together. Might be a problem with the rod lengths. Gotta take a closer look at it. Take it apart once more. And then the threads on the rods are fine. They can, in fact, uh, unscrew. And there are slotted nuts uh, on uh, the bottom side of the scope. See? If they don't uh, engage uh, with the screws, it just ain't gonna work. I try using them uh, as schools. Where did you go? Haha. <laughs> Found it. Do the same on the other ones.
Making this tight tighter than Ethel Granger's laces. And time to try to put it back together again. It's coming together pretty nicely. Almost lost a button. I will probably have to glue them in place. And time to fire this cutesy little scope up and see if the problem persists. Nope, still there. I gotta check the fuel sockets done. Another possible cause would be the main switch. Those fuel sockets, uh, they are of a kind um, that uh, some of you might know from uh, American electronics, like um, the bayonet style. And uh, notice uh, the non-typical uh, fuels, it's not the 5x20, it's something like 3x15. Uh, uh, Very interesting. Good thing about them is that they are silver plated. Mm, 
the uh, overtime the the silver coating uh, tends to tarnish and uh, develop uh, all kinds of uh, bad contact problems. The only suspect now is the main switch. So, it is time to take it apart again and take a deep dive into the bowels of the scope. Because if it was uh, just as simple as replacing the main cable, it would be no fun, right? In order to remove um, the whole assembly from um, the bottom part of the enclosure, we need to take away three more screws. That's gonna make reassembly a little bit tricky, but still possible. Also gonna remove that plate uh, from the fuse cover. And right now we can see the um, main board and uh, all those uh, printed circuit boards uh, they are held together by the enclosure that's the only thing that keeps them connected So after removing the whole thing from the enclosure, you have to pay some extra attention not to not to lose or damage the, anything. And uh, because I have to take a deep dive uh, down to this. Uh, is a start um, type uh, switch right here. Zooming in. There's uh, there's this blue switch. Uh, this is the main switch. And uh, I'm gonna take a deep dive into the bowels of the scope to replace it. This is the multimeter assembly, the one that I planned uh, not to show you, but since I had to take the whole thing apart, I decided to show it um, to you anyway. 
it's made with uh, with uh, double sided uh, PCBs. Pretty nice for the Soviet technology. And uh, look at those trim pots. Beauty. And got a device away to get down to this power switch and look for a way how to how to repair it or, or replace it. I'd rather repair it. Let's disconnect the meter part. The insulation shim between those PCBs. If I use a long enough screwdriver, I will be able to detach the switch from from the frame. Also, wonder if I wondering if I should. Uh, take apart the tube assembly. Uh, I'll try without uh, without doing it. It's pretty difficult to reach. And then there is a nut on the opposite side. By the way, notice this. This is an analog delay line. Try by unscrewing the main board. To make the construction so complicated, who would have thought? Gotta disconnect this one.
which was probably a good idea because it seems like um, there was a cold joint between the, um, the tracks on the PCB and uh, and this uh, piece of metal and uh, this uh, leaves me with uh, pretty good uh, access to the switch and then I can use the medical forceps to hold the nut This is an uh, M2 and a half nut. It's not M3. Really hard to maneuver, but. Smaller screwdriver for this one. Might be pretty tricky to take this uh, switch out. Should give me some some wire to maneuver.
looks like a typical uh, isostat type switch that I have a lot. And the wires from the fuel sockets go to one side of the switch and uh, and then the wires to the transformer go to the opposite side of the switch. I will look for a switch in my uh, part storage and uh, then uh, install it uh, with new wires, replacing the ones that I have here. Let's take a look what I've got in the box. This is the, um, the type of um, the isostat switch you want to use for power application because uh, it has a uh, spring-loaded contact that uh, doesn't uh, allow uh, contacts uh, sticking makes um, makes a uh, quick uh, make and break uh, operation but uh, i won't be able to use it in the, in the scope i will have to use a regular one This is probably better. I will use uh, those pairs of contacts. Starting by 
removing the old wires. Of course, uh, when uh, connecting the, the new wires, I will use heat shrink tubing for insulation because um, this is the main wiring. I was a little bit uh, concerned when I saw uh, no insulation on this one. Also gonna clean the contacts on the other the other side of the switch for better soldering. Pretty nice. And looking for some wires, preferably brown and blue. It's time to start soldering.
And the other side. And some heat shrink tubing. Since this is a DPDT switch, I want the, the throws uh, to be connected uh, with the main transformer because uh, in the off position those contacts wouldn't be live. Time to get back to the scope. Do it from the opposite side. That would be the mines. Put those cables into the bowers of the scope.
so these wires will go to the transformer here. Gotta be careful not to damage the the ribbon cable that's getting into why the contacts on the transformer they are they look like um, they are round pins rather than tabs with holes. Let's cut them down by a few centimeters and strip the insulation off the end. Time to attach them to the main transformer. Access uh, is pretty difficult, and I will use tweezers to maneuver the, the stranded wire into place and wrap it around. Once there, time to solder it. Otherwise, it might come apart. Time for another one. The transformer is connected. Will be now time to attach the switch uh, mechanically. 
using those two M2 and a half screws and nuts. And again, medical forceps to the rescue. They hold the thing in place very nicely. Once the screw is in the position, it's time to go down there with a knot. Also using the medical forceps. Goes in like a breeze. Time for another one. Sudden release. And critical part retrieval. The washer fell down there. Oh well. Maneuvered into place. And that's it. The switch is now mechanically attached. It is time to connect the new wires to the fuse holders.
again I will use the heat shrink tubes. And what's happened here? One of the contacts broke on, on the switch. Oh well. Let's leave it this way. Time to look for a different switch. Uh, put it on again. And reconnect the whole thing. That's time for another episode. Sometimes things are harder than you think. See you in a moment. Bye.